I'm Chad Reynolds with BangShift.com and today we're going to show you why you need an MSB flying magnet crank trigger system and how to install. When you're moving up the performance scale to higher compression and even higher RPM, it may be time to also consider upgrading to a crank trigger system. Traditionally, a high quality distributor like this MSD unit is going to be fine for you street performance guys, but when you get up above 7,000 RPM or you've got super high compression, forced induction, or even nitrous, it might be a time to consider going to a crank trigger. There's a couple of reasons for that. The big thing is that with a traditional distributor, you're talking about waiting for the crankshaft to start turning, that energy to go through the timing chain, then into the timing gear that's on the camshaft, through the camshaft, through the gear set at the bottom of the distributor, and finally up to the rotor. Given that there's lash, slack in the chain, and crank twist, it's not gonna be as accurate a timing system as you're gonna get with a crank trigger. MSD first came up with the crank trigger system in the early 80s. But since then, they've developed their system into the MSD Flying Magnet Crank Trigger. Why is it called a Flying Magnet? Simple. MSD incorporates rare earth magnets into their trigger wheel, which is why it's called the Flying Magnet. The magnets are spaced 90 degrees apart on a typical V8 engine, and as they go flying by the non-magnetic pickup, it triggers the ignition system. The special thing is that only these rare earth magnets can trigger the ignition system. There are several others on the market that either use a steel wheel with dimples in them or an aluminum wheel with steel inserts and then utilize a magnetic pickup. These units are very susceptible to false triggering. False triggering is bad. An MSD flying magnet crank trigger will not false trigger. It's simply the most accurate way to trigger an ignition system. MSD offers their flying magnet crank trigger systems for a variety of applications. Small block and big block Chevrolets, Fords, Chryslers, and even Pontiacs. One of the things that you're going to have to remember is if you're running a small block Chevrolet, you need to measure to make sure you get the right kit for the right size balancer in your application. But no matter what application you get, your MSD kit is going to come with a couple of main components. Number one is the flying magnet trigger wheel. Number two is going to be a set of brackets and then obviously the non-magnetic pickup. Included are also a set of spacers, nuts and bolts, everything you need to install the system like we're going to install today on our small block Ford. One of the reasons you're not going to see these on a lot of street vehicles is because this trigger wheel is 3 eighths of an inch thick, which means it's going to space out your accessory drive pulley on the crankshaft. If you're doing a street vehicle, you're going to have to take that into consideration so you can space the alternator and the water pump pulleys accordingly. If you're a race car guy, you're not really caring about that. You're going to have an electric water pump, you're probably not running an alternator, and so that isn't a big concern. But Remember, you blower guys are going to have to take that into account in order to make sure that the belt lines up. Before you install your crank trigger system, you're going to need to remove the mechanical advanced setup from your distributor and lock it out. Now that's easy to do if you've got one of these MSD Pro Billet distributors, but if you have a stock distributor, you may need to remove the advanced mechanism and weld it solid so it's locked out. Don't forget that before you pull the distributor out, you need to put it at TDC on number one firing position and mark your rotor position so that when you put it back in, you can put it back in the right spot. On this particular MSD distributor, which is for our small block Ford, we're gonna pull the rotor off and then the cap adapter set up and then go at this collar in order to lock out the advance mechanism. This particular distributor has a cap adapt set up on it. In order to remove the weights, that you see here, which work the advance mechanism and the springs, you first need to remove this little tiny nut right here. You're gonna need to remove the gear or the collar off the distributor shaft, which in our case, since it's a Ford, it's just the collar. Once the collar is removed, you can pull the shaft out of the housing a few inches. Go ahead, remove the weights and springs, and on this MSD distributor, remove the nut that controls the advance stop bushing. Rotate the shaft 180 degrees and position the stop stud in the other hole. Use the same nut to lock out the advance mechanism and there you go. Slide the shaft back in place and reinstall the collar and you're all done. Now that we locked out the distributor and reinstalled it, it's time to actually install the flying magnet trigger system. The first thing that we're going to install 
is the bracket for the non-magnetic pickup. With the bracket, MSD supplies spacers so that you can use them for whatever your application is. And on big block Chevrolets, they actually set up the bracketry so that you can install it on either side of the engine. The next step is actually gonna be installing your trigger wheel. Now we covered a little bit of the features on the trigger wheel before, but one other thing you have to remember is that it comes with this centering ring because it's very important that it's hub centric on the crankshaft. Now on our application, we don't need to use the ring because our balancer has a lip that fits into the backside of the ring. But on some applications, you're gonna need to use this, so make sure you pay attention to that. Before you jump in headlong into this thing and just mount the trigger wheel, there's a couple of things that you need to consider. One of them is that you only have so much adjustment over here, about 20 degrees for your non-magnetic pickup. So you're gonna wanna set your base timing ahead of time. And what you're gonna do is turn the balancer to in our case on the small block Ford, 30 degrees is a good base. And then set up your wheel and line it up as close as you can to your sensor. We're pretty close here, so we're gonna have a pretty easy adjustment on this thing. But another couple of things you need to pay attention to is the arrow. The arrow on this wheel is very important. It must be out. You have to be able to see the arrow because the rare earth magnets that are in it have very specific polarity. If you were to mount this backwards on your harmonic balancer, the engine will fire and idle and work but it won't rev up. When you get into higher RPM range, you're gonna get false triggers and misses, and that's gonna be because you have the wheel on backwards. So make sure that the arrow is pointing out, make sure that you get it pointed toward your non-magnetic sensor, and again, don't forget to set your base timing. The final component to install is the non-magnetic pickup. But before you go threading it in and tightening down the bracket, you need to make sure that this bracket is centered over your magnet, and that you've used the correct spacers so that the non-magnetic pickup is centered over the edge of the wheel. One of the common questions that everybody has on a crank trigger setup is how big an air gap to set between your non-magnetic pickup and the trigger wheel. And the truth is, if the engine starts, it's probably pretty good. But as a spec, we'd tell you that between 50 and 80 thousandths is right, and we've set ours to 65, just enough clearance to get the feeler gauge in. There's no performance advantage to going to a tighter or looser gap, so don't worry about that, but make sure you don't go any tighter than 50 thousandths, because if you get any harmonic balancer wobble or crankshaft flex, you might take out the pickup. Remember when we told you earlier that you needed to mark the cap and where your rotor location was? This is why. Now that we've reinstalled the distributor and we've got it locked out, we need to phase the rotor. And here's our mark here, so we're gonna put it right in the center of the rotor when it's in the number one firing position, and that should make sure that we're good and set. Once the engine fires up, you're gonna notice that the timing is rock steady. You're gonna need to check it, make sure that your adjustment is right. In our case, we're dead on 30 degrees, and notice that the timing doesn't move at all. If you find that you'd like to have a little bit of retard to ease cranking during startup, MSD offers a full line of timing control units that can take care of you. If you have any other questions about installing a crank trigger or about any other ignition system product from MSD, make sure you check out msdignition.com where we have a lot of videos that'll help you out.